Welcome and thank you so much for coming and attending to 30 Conversations. Uh, we are about to start our uh, lesson. We are dealing with um, hatred amongst us, how to get away with meta, and our speaker is already here and I'll start off with the word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We appreciate your presence. We are about to engage, to learn more about what you want us to learn. May you please help us and bless us abundantly as we go through the rest of the lesson today. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, and thank you so much for coming on time. Our speaker is already here, and without wasting any time, I'll give the announcements towards the end of our lesson. Amanda, can I please ask you that you please preach on your video, and then you can take us through uh, on that one. Okay, yeah, there you are. Maybe say something so that we can probably hear. You're muted. There you go. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, hi. Good. Now we can see you. Now we can hear you. Please take us through, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Hi everyone, I will start off with a poem. Um, <clears throat> Misunderstandings are a root of chaos around us. Family and friends depart without reason. The lack of communication is succeeded by minds abstaining from wisdom. Awaken, the devil is roaring. We slumber, our spirit is unconscious. Be aware to see it's not worth it to fight when life can be solved in prayer and God's wisdom. Oh, how peace we often forfeit and the needless pain we keep bearing. When God gave us guidance to happy living, book of life imparted lessons for solving quarrels. Hi everyone, hi once again. Um, I greet you once again in the name of Jesus. Um, I trust that you've said amen there uh, behind your screens. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank um, 230 Conversations uh, for the platform. You guys are doing amazing work, and I pray that God continues to bless your ministry and expand your territory. So um, I'm not much of a speaker. Uh, this is definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, I was shocked to even get an, uh, an invitation because I felt like I'm not qualified to talk about this topic, but um, I pray that the message or the presentation will be clear and that the Holy Spirit will be present among us. Before we start, let's pray, bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful mercies. Father, as we are about to start to delve into this topic, may the Holy Spirit dwell among us and may you under, may you answer the questions that we might have, Lord. I pray in your mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. So I've been very conflicted by this topic. Um, it's such a topic, it's such a heavy topic that I got very triggered uh, by it in some way, and it literally left me distressed uh, for the whole week. Um, the truth is, I struggled with, you know, getting the difference between hatred and anger, because, you know, they feel exactly the same, and yet they might be different. I found myself asking questions like, can love and hate coexist? Can God hate? I asked my question, myself these questions because there's a, actually a verse I stumbled upon. It's Malachi 1 verse 1 to 3. I'll just summarize it. Uh, I have loved you, says the Lord, yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord, yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. How can we reconcile a God who says he is love when he also says he hated someone? That's something to actually think about, which you know, I hope I can get answers because obviously I don't have the answers. Anyway, let's get right into it. Um, the definition of hatred. So Oxford Dictionary defines hate as um, a strong or an intense dislike. Hatred can be defined as the opposite of love. You know, while the Bible commands us to love each other, 
on one another. Circumstances around us, you know, may tempt us to develop hate amongst one another. Another definition I, I found is hatred is an unexpressed anger. You know, if you did express your anger, you would murder someone. But if you're not going to murder someone, then you keep them from a distance. And if you graduate from that hatred, then you end up being disgusted. That's anger. Um, the main verse for today is 1 John 3 verse um, 15. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So I'm an internal auditor by uh, profession. I'm not a speaker. So I decided to you know, approach this um, presentation. I decided to take an audit approach on this topic, hatred amongst us. I, I decided to conduct an audit, you know? Yeah. So I'll be presenting to you a divine audit report today, okay? So we'll start. So in an audit, we need to find out what are the standards what are, what are the standards and what does the policy say? And then we have to check if we, are, we do meet the standards. Okay, so let's see what the Bible says. We'll look at um, John, John, Proverbs, Leviticus, Ephesians, and Matthew. Um, I'll just read in your hearing, and I want you to digest those verses. Okay, so we'll read 1 John 2 verse 9. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. 1 John 2 verse 11. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 4 verse 20. If anyone says I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Then we'll move to Proverbs 10 verse 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love, love covers all offenses. Okay. And then Proverbs 26 verse 24 to 26. Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred he covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. And then the last three verses, Leviticus 19 verse 17. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. Ephesians 4 verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with your malice. And finally, the last verse, Matthew 5 verse 43 to 45, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on on the unjust so we're done looking at the standards you know the standards are regulations like you have to follow the standards you know I'll be moving on to, you know, policy. I called it policy EGW, you know, policy EGW, uh, chapter 57, hatred and, and revenge. This is from uh, the book Mind, I think it's Mind, Body, Personality, something like that. I don't know if I'm wrong. So Ellen G. White says, thoughts in, unfolds the deed. Now, the spirit of hatred and revenge um, originated with Satan, and it led him to put to death the Son of God, right? Whoever cherishes malice or unkindness is, you know, cherishing the same spirit, and its fruits will be put unto death. In the revengeful thought, the evil deed lies enfolded as the plant in the seed. 
When you read 1 John 3 verse 15, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And he know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. The second point, do not suffer resentment to ripen into malice. Um, do not allow the wound to fester and break out into poison words, which, you know, may taint the minds of those who may, who hear. Do not allow, you're not supposed to let uh, bitter thoughts to continue to fill your mind. Just go to your brother or sister in humility and, and sincere and talk to him, you know, about the matter. The other point is when you hate your brother, it's actually a violation of the sixth commandment, you know? All acts of injustice um, that tend to shorten life, the spirit of hatred and revenge or indulgence of any passions that leads to injurious acts towards others or causes us even to wish them harm are to a greater or less deg degree, you know, violation of the sixth commandment. Be it beclouds um, the perspective power. Now, pride, you know, self-love, selfishness, um, hatred, envy, jealousy, have an ability to becloud our perspective powers. And the truth is, the truth which would make you wise into salvation has lost its power to charm and control the mind. And finally, Ellen G. White says, Hatred does not um, does not bring satisfaction. Now we've said all the nice things. I've said all the nice things. You know what is required. So I'll be moving forward to what is currently happening. In an order, you see the standards. You see the policies. Let's see if the, we are actually um, in line with those standards. Let's dive into the things that are currently happening in the world and into the church. So uh, when I finished my audit, um, there were four findings. Um, the first findings uh, was under church members. Now there is uh, hatred amongst the church members, church politics. Those who have experienced um, intense church business sessions <laughs> huh? before we'll discover how shocking Adventists can behave with the wrong spirit. Okay. Uh, finding number two are uh, family members. You know, um, there is hate among our family members. You know, have you found yourself, the question, have you found yourself just being angry at, an, at, at your aunt or your grandma and you just don't know, you just inherited that, that, that hatred, the hatred tends to be, you know, generational. Finding number three, people and colleagues. Hating people or haters, you know, there's jealousy. People can hate you because you got a specific job, you got a promotion, you know, you're getting married. People can hate you. You know, people show their true colors when there's actually progress, you know, progress in your life. And finally, hate amongst ethnic groups, racism, sexuality, power, you know, et cetera. But um, these are the main findings. Uh, there are other observations, but today we'll just stick to these four findings, which need to be addressed because they are a high risk. <laughs> so um, giving up hating someone, you know, can be a struggle. Uh, it must begin with us honestly to admit to ourselves that we do hate someone. Uh, we cannot just, you know, turn off feelings of hate. Um, the traditional way for addressing hatred, you know, denying our feelings, merely teaching us, teaches us to be good liars. De denial is lying to yourself. Sometimes um, hatred is justified, guys. Uh, perhaps someone was molested, has molested you or your child. Mm. If you did not hate that person, I mean, that would be a bad thing, you know? You certainly should not trust uh, such a person again. If they were truly repented, let's say they were truly repented, they would also not expect to be trusted, you know? Perhaps 
a drunk person ran into a vehicle and now your relative is bound to a wheelchair. You justified to hate that person. Many times, um, feelings of hatred dissipate over time. This is especially true when our hatred is not justified. Perhaps uh, we do not get our way. As I said, someone else got the job you applied for. The person you were dating decided to marry someone else, you know, within the church. It happens a lot. Um, sometimes children are angry at their parents, you know, divorce. And you end up, the children, you end up hating your parents because of it, you know. These are just some of the realities and causes of why people are angry and harbor hatred that are happening, uh, harbor ha hatred that is happening today. Okay. So um, I'll move into, you know, the effects of hatred. Um, hatred or anger, you know, can actually make you physically sick or cause depression if not dealt with. Um, I actually know someone, I actually met a lady who was um, hospitalized because of stroke. And this lady is not old. She had no history of high blood pressure. She's our age group. She's younger than 30, but she had a stroke, you know? Um, I speak from experience. I speak from experience. Um, some of you who've read my book <clears throat> may have picked it up from the emotions that are depicted in the book. Just a quick story, my testimony. Okay, I'll just keep it short. So for the longest of time, I was angry. And at some point I hated my dad because I was conceived while he was married. And I also found out that my late mother attempted suicide when she found out he was married, you know, which obviously caused me to feel resentment, anger, and hatred. Not only did I hate my father, but, you know, I hated myself for the longest of time because um, I always believed that I'm a product of cheating and that has kind of been my identity, which set the tone, you know, for my entire life. But fast forward to this year, five months ago, I met him for the very first time. I remember just feeling numb. Okay. But to cut the long story short, um, I was grateful for God, you know, I'm grateful for God, you know, who uh, helped me work through the relationship with my dad and being able to forgive, you know, I'm grateful for God who provides us with psychologists, you know, not just psychologists, but his Holy Spirit, you know, to guide us through the emotions. He gives the Holy Spirit to guide uh, as through the emotions um, that the devil often throw, um, throws our way. Okay. Anyway, back to hatred. Hate is um, intimately tied with death. And just like Jesus called someone embracing lust, just like Jesus called someone embracing lust and adulterer, someone who's harboring hate is actually murdering his brother in his heart. When this hate is acted upon, it leads to death. Sometimes, you know, that is a spiritual or relational, that is spiritual or relational. However, it can also be the ending of life of another. Brethren, hate is dangerous because when taken to its logical con conclusion, it is the desire to eliminate the humanity of another. Mm. Now, in an audit, obviously, you have to provide recommendations, you know, for the observations you see. So I'll be practical, you know, because sometimes people use usually use the Bible to suppress how we feel, you know. <laughs> so recommendation one, <coughs> forgiveness. Now, we should view our hatred as a temporary condition, and God needs to be our counselor to help us deal with it. We should be ready to forgive and our desire should be to ask God above anything else to help us. I encourage you, you know, to do um, something very simple and uh, very practical. 
So I want you to take a piece of paper whenever you get a chance. And I want you to write, um, write down the people you consider your enemies. Mm -hmm. Write down the names of the people who have cursed you, those who have abused you, and those who may even hate you. After writing them down, uh, just spend time praying over them. Now that's recommendation number two. Spend time to pray for them. Just pray for them. Pray God. Just pray. Don't pray like, God, please make them realize I'm right and they are wrong. No. But pray for God's grace and mercy to come upon them. And pray that your heart can be changed for them. Pray that they can forgive you too, you know. Sometimes we are the toxic ones and we may not realize it, but that's a topic for another day, you know. Um, never sleep angry. That's recommendation number three. Don't sleep, don't ever sleep without expressing your anger because he knows that anger can turn into hate and you start living in that anger. Finally, and people usually take this recommendation for granted but go to therapy and counseling you know seek counsel from you know um qualified people you know to help you deal with um forgiveness a lot of i'm sorry to say a lot of black parents guys don't believe in therapy you know and at times i always listen to these conflicts uh, in our family and i just realized with Iwena. We are go when the depression. You can actually tell that you know it's generational. It's just a shame that you know in this day and age they don't believe you know in mental you know, mental wellness. You know they think it's a evil spirit. That's also a topic of for another day. But yes, um, those are the recommendations that I have given. And um, yeah, guys, that's my presentation. Yes, thank you, Mta. Um, hi. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Amanda, for that one beautiful presentation that we've had right now. And, and uh, um, there's so much that we can pick it up, pick up from from there. And maybe I want to just uh, start off with 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 questions and and um, comments on on issues that have been raised. I think it's way deeper. Uh, and, and I know you, 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 when we talked, you say to, to me that we'd like to start off this and, um, you know, you're more into conversation than, than, than anything else. And that's exactly what I would like to see happening uh, from there on. Okay. You've spoken about the causes or the places where anger is manifested, which could be in church, which could be in family settings, uh, which could be colleagues and, uh, and so forth. Uh, you've talked about the recommendations as to what should someone do when they are angry at someone. Uh, one of the parts that I really liked is I wait for people to lift up their hands and for comments to start trickling in. Is 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 um, the issue of is is anyone immune from that? Are we, by virtue of being Christians, immune from from that? The policy, the standard, right, um, and 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 all that. And I think we we speak about deep seated issues here issues that will, you know, uh, come from our past, come from our present, things that have been said to us about, about us, um, whether it's gossip, hearsay, or someone who's actually coming straight to you and telling you to your face that you're this and that and that engine causes emotions of anger that could come out from, from you, right? So so, so those are the things that you, you, you picked up. And, and I'm, I'm reading something from someone here. He says, you know what, Mina, I hate and I'm not ready to forgive, all right? So, so I think, I think, uh, someone says, yeah, granted we'll be angered, but how do we protect ourselves and even others from developing it into, into hatred? And, and, the, and the bulk of, of, of your presentation then was centered on the verse, first John chapter three, verse 15. He who hates his brother is a murderer. I think when that came through, when you read that verse in my mind, I'm like, so, so for someone to, to, to hate, to kill, yes. you, you need to hate first. So the act is, is killing, but the thought that informs the deed, the thought that informs the act of killing is the anger itself or is the hatred that comes from us. Now, having said that, let's try, let's be honest as we're about to engage. Let's be real 
let's be practical. Let's look at things for what they are and what they should be. Indeed, I want to give over my first hand right now. My man, take it up, Go ahead, my brother. Uh, all right, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yes. Okay. All right, thanks for the presentation. So as you're saying, I think we, in this conversation, we need to be, to be very real, you know? And it is true that, <coughs> excuse me, I, I've, I've, got a, I've got flow now, so just excuse me there. So, so what is happening is um, with hatred, it is very true that, you know, you know, if you hate your brother, like what the brother, what the brother says, you know, it's, it's the same as with you, a matter because sometimes you hate so much to the point of actually finding yourself wanting to do something, something to that person, right? <laughs> but personally, um, what I'd say in one of the greatest challenges that I've, that, that I've experienced, which I will not speak about in this platform, I would say well, what worked for me, because I certainly believe that I've, I've overcame that, what what worked for me was the was the courage to confront the situation, right? So I noticed that soon after I confronted the person, and I had a a one on one um, engagement with the person. <clears throat> I noticed that uh, those feelings of hatred from that moment they dissipated. Uh, uh, because of that. So I think in one of the recommendations, I would also like to add that as well. To say sometimes it is avoiding to confront uh, a situation directly or a person, whatever it is that the person might have done, and really engaging with them because it is from the courage to do that that you are freed. You know, even if let's say whatever that they might have taken from you is not uh, replaced, but um, there is power in confronting uh, a situation and just speaking about it, you know, and, and addressing it for what it really is. So, so, so I, I found power in that uh, because I think I'm able to trace to say from the moment that I've done that, you know, those things of, you know, you know, wanting to do something, something to that person, they are not there anymore. I'm okay. I might not have gotten back what maybe I lost, but... But, but I feel, you know, it, it has brought so much change to, to combat the situation. But then when, <coughs> excuse me, but then when we suppress it and, and we prevent, obviously depending on the situation, and we prevent, you know, or we avoid confronting the person or the situation and speaking about it, you know, uh, we, we tend to have a hold on that and that tends to eat us. And you continue to imagine, reimagine, or, you know, think about, Stuff that you want to do and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I can I can say. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank yeah. Th thank you so much, Kugutai, for, for, for that one. Um so so I think you've given us the idea that uh, confrontation is very important. I think it's important to to approach someone that is wronged you that you hate. And I think one of the things that our speaker said is is accepting that we are hating someone. And I think I think that's a very uncomfortable thing as a Christian. To admit that I hate because Christianity at its foundation has no hate in it. Our, our, our main actor in Christianity, which is Jesus, is love. God is love. And, and we're supposed to imitate that. But then it's uncomforting to say, I as a Christian, I hate you. I hate my mother. I hate my father. I hate my sisters. I hate my, my workmate. I hate all that. And, and all this. It's very uncomforting. But I think I think you said, let's let's approach, let's accept that you are not happy about what's going on. And maybe one of my questions that Amanda, please keep close as well. I've seen the way his, his, his end up there, but I'll give over to him. But, but one of the things that uh, we should probably uh, rally on is, 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 is the idea that as, as, as Christians, is, is anger justified? Okay, in a business deal, I put all my money, all my savings, and you burn me completely in a relationship. This is my wife being with her, my best friend, my friend sleeps with my wife. My cousin sleeps with my wife, okay? Right, this is a, a, a workmate who spoke lies about me, 
I got fired. This is a church member who tells people that I'm HIV positive and there's confirmation from who God knows where that I'm HIV positive and all these kind of things. All these many things that come through and there's many situations, fathers who have left us pop up when we're about to get married and demand lobola. Fathers who have left us pop up when we're doing well in life and demand this. Mothers who, who left us and, and went to live their own lives, who chose their husbands, their, their partners more than us. There's so many things around the Black person's life that makes the Black person angry. So let's discuss these things and, and how you as an individual, like what Ukutwa was saying, how you as an individual are, are, are working on, on that part there, as Ahmad was portraying to us here from the own level. Go ahead. I want to unmute you. Uh, yes, yes. You know, uh, well, ish, yeah, I was just, uh, uh, my, my sister and I were helping Amanda maybe just to unpack this because she was really struggling with this one. Um, we expected silence like this uh, uh, from <laughs> our, our, our fellow uh, delegates here today. Um, we expected silence because maybe um, in Ningiletu, we are Christians and anger is just seen as something that must be suppressed constantly. And so we are hiding our feelings and that's fine. Um, let's keep doing that guys, that's okay. But um, I, I think um, to try and deal with this thing about hatred for me, um, I, I feel like I keep going back into um, the definition. Okay, I've got my own definition. It might be wrong, all right, about what hatred is. And maybe it is coming from this, you know, the instruction that God is providing um, for us that you know what, um, you, you, you know, you, you cannot say that you love me whilst you hate your brother. I feel that hatred is unaddressed anger. All right. And my position is that maybe as Christians and you, yeah, you guys can disagree with me this one on this one. It's fine. As Christians, maybe, you know, we need to reconsider how our culture deals with the concept of anger. Maybe let's start there. My understanding of anger is unexpressed hatred, all right? So there is something dark about the fact that you are in the type of space or platform where you are telling yourself that you are not allowed to express your anger or you are not allowed to be upset about something and you are not allowed to actually, you know, just express, you know, a certain feeling. That means that, you know, you can't really be honest with yourself. And so it is much easier if you don't have, you know, the, the, the wherewithal to express that anger to just sit back and just hate on that person. And it is much easier to hate. I think you graduate from anger. It's easy to, to be angry at someone that you love, you know. It's it's fine. You can you can love someone that you care about. You can you can you can be angry at about uh, uh, at someone that you care about. But when you now graduate that to hatred, you are starting to remove the life and the humanity from that person. And maybe that's where maybe God, a God of love, whose very being is about love, is capable of even hating himself. All right. There is something about the disease of sin that God just hates. He is angry at a murderer, all right? And he's angry because, you know, he knows that this murderer, fine, can actually, has a chance of actually becoming better. There is something within his spirit, within his breath of life that can be drawn towards God, that can actually have a stronger relationship with God. But once, what is stopping that murderer from having a closer relationship with God? It's, it's simply sin. So usually there is something, there is a device that we use to remove the humanity from someone, to remove the life from someone in order for me to actually see this person as just an obstacle. They're not a person to me. I hate them. In fact, I wish they were dead. And so it's easy then now to murder um, that person in your heart. You know, they're just an object. They are just a, a thing. They're an obstacle. Um, and I think it is very dangerous to have a culture where we cannot um, constructively, I think, let me put, let me qualify that a little bit because then people are like, I was said I must be angry and so I must slap people. No, we need to have a culture where we address anger a, a little bit more constructively 
it feels like we need to be silenced. And I think that the danger and the toxicity is in the silence. Look around ourselves right now. We have youth leaving. We have churches separating. We don't see our white brothers and sisters and our black brothers and sisters together. When we come to our business section sessions, we have some type of, you know, dark environment going on, all right? There are certain things that we are not willing to talk about because people uh, are not somewhat allowed to be angry. So I, I need help here, guys. Can you help me out? Is it okay to express anger um, as a Christian? Please, can someone help me here? Because I feel that it is quite a, a, a toxic um, aspect of our character and it is weighing down on our shoulders a little bit. It is way down on, on, on us. We are not able to actually be ourselves amongst each other because we are not supposed to be angry. Uh, we, 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 instead, we just keep quiet and in our silence, we, 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 we graduate, graduate that anger into hatred. So I, I, I just want to know, is it okay for us to be angry? Yeah, let's start from there. I don't know about you guys. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, Angaba, for that one. Uh, much appreciated. The question has been heard. Is it okay to be angry? And if it's okay to express anger as well. Now let's speak again, and we're gonna give the hands that are coming up. Let's speak again on, on the issues to do with, um, what if there's no platform to exercise that anger? Amanda spoke about who her dad and, and how she felt betrayed and all those kind of things. How, if there's no platform, at any point when she was young, maybe she couldn't express it. There was no time. When, 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 when this could be possible. Or even if she could express it, what if the other party is not willing to listen? They're speaking about a husband and a wife situation where the wife and the husband are present, the wife is angry or the husband is angry, but is not capable. Every time they get shut down, uh, culture puts them down, the Bible, religion puts them down, they can't express how they feel. Ha, 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 is, ha. What happens if there's no opportunity to actually do that? And if we do express the anger, how do we then react to each other as Christians? Are we talking about issues where people stop talking to each other? Look at the people that you used to talk to that you don't talk to anymore. Look at the people, your family members that you've blocked from whether your, 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 your social medias or whatever. Look at the people that you've not talked to in years. That even when you see them, you don't like them. Look at the people that spoke about you and, and spoke so many bad things about you and you know that they talked about you, that they don't even know that you know, but the way you treat them. How do you handle that? So as a Christian, then we're on the idea that the policy and the standard does not change. So, so we cannot drop the standard to meet our level of hatred, our level of anger. We are at this point, as Amanda put it across, trying to elevate ourselves through the help of God to a position of meeting the standard. But let's be clear. The Bible has said that there is no one who is a murderer, who hates his brother, who shall inherit the kingdom of God. So anyone on this platform, me included, that hates someone will not make it to the kingdom of heaven in any way possible. Let's have Gift and Ash coming through. Let's discuss more. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for this topic. Hey? It's a really important topic, especially from, uh, for us Adventists. Um, what I learned um, is that when it comes to hatred or actually when it comes to anger, what I've learned in life, because when I was also growing up, as, uh, growing up when I was a child, growing up, not a child, but yeah, teenage would going up, I noticed that when you have anger and you don't tell the person that, okay, you angered me on this, this thing and you keep on suppressing it, it ends up... Um, filling up and the day it bursts, it will look so ugly. So what I've learned, and that actually helps me, is that when someone angers me, that right there and there, I'll just tell them that, you know what, I didn't like what, we did, what you did there. I didn't like how it happened. And then we talk about it, and then we resolve it. Even the Bible says, let not the sun set whilst you're angry at your brother. I, I now understand what that verse means. Because when you are angry and you go to sleep, you might not even sleep. You'll keep on thinking about what the person did to you and you end up coming up with the worst scenarios. But if you actually approach them the same time when they anger you and you say, you know what? 
I didn't like how it happened. Guess what? That anger doesn't end up turning into hatred because you've spoken to the person, you've resolved it. And most of the cases is that someone might anger you without them knowing they've angered you. So you opening up to that person and then telling them to say, you know what? I didn't like how this actually happened. And you talk about it and you come up with a resolution, you laugh about it at the end of the day actually helps a lot. It can help a lot of relationships. It doesn't mean that Christians are not allowed to be angry. Even Jesus Christ himself, when he saw people selling um, inside the temple, he got angry, and but he didn't hate the people. He was angry about the situation. And there and there, he didn't let the sun set. There and there, he dealt with the situation. So you talking to a person when they've angered you, there and there, for me, I found, find it so helpful. It helps most of my uh, relationships with my friends and everything. And they now know, I, I, if you angered me, I won't start having moods and start not talking or whatnot, because that doesn't help. Why let the sun set? Even when it comes to marriages, it, 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 it actually helps if you just talk to your spouse to say the same thing. You know what? I didn't like it that you didn't do this. or I didn't like it. And then you, you resolve it. At the end of the day, people don't know you. You don't know people. They don't know what triggers you. They don't know what makes you angry. So the more you speak about it the same time, for me, I feel it helps. It doesn't mean you don't have to be angry. Suppressing anger as Adventists is a wrong thing. People come up with these things to say Adventists never should get angry. Adventists should always be loving. But we have emotions. So it is allowed to be angry. But what do you do about it? Confront the person and talk about it. And even there is even a resolution. If you talked about it and still you guys don't come up to with an agreement, get a third person to come in. There are, there are a sort of resolutions on what to do with this in this scenario. So at the end of the day, the same day, before the sun sets, talk to the person. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Kifton Ash. Before the sun sets, talk to the person. I think talking, talking, talking is something that's being expressed here over and over again. We live in a generation, Kifton Ash, as I'm about to give to Maya, which celebrates cutting people off. Yo, we are the celebrators of, cut, well, of cutting people off. We'll tell people like, Mina, I'll cut you off. Minavela, if you, I will, if you, I will, you know, those kind of things that we say. And we're very proud of ourselves for saying at one point, I had this friend of mine, I don't talk to that girl anymore. There was this husband, I don't talk to that guy. You mean that one? Not anymore. There's this aunt of mine, I don't talk to her. When I go to family gatherings, she knows. And, and I think anger is exacerbated when, when you have resources, because with resources comes pride and arrogance, especially on a point where you are angry at someone who is less than you. So you can even abuse them further on by virtue of the fact that you have resources. Um, it's always, again, on the flip side, it's also very painful when you're the one without the resources, right? And you're angry at someone with the resources and that God is blessing abundantly. Imagine being left by your wife, being left by a girlfriend, and you think like, nah, you know what? She's going to remember me, eh, blah, blah, blah. And she doesn't. She moves on to a better looking guy and has more money. In fact, God blesses her so much materially and otherwise when, you have, when she has left you. She just walks away just like that. He just walks away and his life becomes better after you and lives with so much anger. And you feel betrayed, not just by him, but by the God who's blessing him. So then how do you handle it as a Christian? Entire wars, and I'm trying to hit up the platform, entire wars are... are, 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 are I started off on the basis of anger. Hitler almost eliminated the whole Jewish nation, 50 million Jews killed by a man who was angry and hated Jews. They hated them. In Africa here, we got Uganda, the Hutus and the Tutsis here. They killed each other. Pretty much in a matter of or a month or so, 800,000 people had been killed in that particular nation. And you tell me that someone is not supposed to be angry. Go to countries here, even in South Africa, how people were killing each other, the Kosas and the Zulus right there, how they were killing each other in the 90s. Go to Zimbabwe, how the Shonas and the Javelas were killing each other back then, and how so much hatred even goes for generation and generation and generation and generation. Hated amongst us. Mayor, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Let's try that again. Perfect. 
Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Perfect. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're well. I didn't know this, this, this topic is very hard hitting and Tower teacher said, oh, it knows on Kumbula, Michelle Pella, Mike, and it doesn't happen. It's a, it's one of those painful things that uh, I think as a generation we go through. Uh, and then, and, and the issue of anger is, um, is difficult to discuss because there are so many elements to that, that, that anger has. We, we are a generation, as you've said, that is triggered by anything and everything. Uh, our ability to forgive is as big as our ability to find love. Um, we, we often speak of the dangers of Um Jolo, yet we never speak, we, we never really address the triggers that, 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 that affect us. And we're triggered by everything. One of the examples that you gave is, you know, getting angry at your boss, and knowing that there's nothing that you can do about it, especially in an economy where you need the job. And your boss, you, you are so angry, but you still have to smile and say good morning every morning. Um, it's, it's, it's just so difficult to deal with that. And then you find out what, um, this, um, this, this anger begins, uh, starts brewing up until it becomes an element that we call hate. One, one, one of the very old movies is called Horrible Bosses. If you saw that one where three guys come together and they plan on how to murder their bosses because it's so terrible to them. Element of hate that sprung from um, uh, anger per se. Now, I have quite a few questions being a young man myself. Um, you know, there's some, there is anger that we incite in people, Tina. We incite anger in people and we know it and we are very proud of it. You know, Uti, I know this is gonna make him mad, or this is gonna make him mad. And then you do it because it's gonna make them mad. And we are comfortable and even brag about it to our friends. And this is this is not something, this is something that we talk about. Sabbath lunch is sitting together. And this is comfortable and this is us enjoying you know, talking about these things where we actively incite anger and hate in others, simply for the premonition of being, you know, providing entertainment or because it makes us happy. You know, so the, the, my, my question there would be, why do we do such? And two, how can we repent from such? And then the other question that I have is, um, there are people who hate you for your very existence sometimes. They don't, you know, they, they just hate you for being you. Uh, you know, I, I remember I was in I was in the Val a few months ago. And then this girl, uh, actually, last year closing function, um, we had camp, and then we had these compliment jars that we had put in the kitchen where any 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 time during the camp, we could write a compliment and go drop it off in someone's jar. And then my child had a compliment at a message that said, I've hated you for four years. And, and, and she's like, I thought you were a terrible person and all knowing. And I picked up and, and I laughed. But now that I look at it, the person held anger and hated me for four years, simply for my existence or per se something I did and I did not know about it. And how am I, am I, I'm asking, how do we deal with such people or how do we improve their situation? Because one of the things that we need to look out for as a church, as a young people, is if someone is uncomfortable or they have anger or there's something that is going on with them, for their salvation, it is better to help them address whatever they're feeling. If I know what Lomundu Nkwatele because I stole his girlfriend per se, I'd rather sit with him rather than them losing heaven simply because they've held this grudge and this anger that has developed into hate. Because the Bible says, as you as you exclaimed, that um that uh, if you hate you're not going to heaven because hate 
uh, breeds um, uh, murderous feelings in, uh, in, in one person. So how do, uh, I, I think it's time as, 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 as people to, if you know what this person hates you, you know, uh, take a step to say, uh, how can we address it? And then that's, 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 that's the other one. And then finally, is it forgiveness if, if, if you say to the person, I forgive you, but you never want to see them again? Um, is, is, is it forgiveness? You spoke about celebrating cutting people off. I, I saw a comment from Zinche that said, I delete your numbers, I do a memorial service, and even I bury you alive, you know? And it's something that we're so encouraged to do within our workspaces, our social spaces, our family spaces. What if he's toxic, I'm gonna cut him off. And to some extent, there's truth in, 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 in that, but is, is, is it really forgiveness if you, if, 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 if you forgive to say to the person, I forgive you, but I never want to see you. Again, one of the things that the presenter spoke about is the 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 fact that uh, if someone rapes your child and then you say you forgive them in 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 their in on their side they also need to understand that the crime that they committed breeds lack of trust within the individual that they committed to because if you rape my child as much as i'll forgive you i'll never trust you again you know so my question is is it forgiveness if you say i forgive you and then you say but as much as I forgive you, I do not want to see you in my life again. Uh, so I, I I really struggle with 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 hate because it is it, it is something that develops every day, and the con 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 is into that we do unknowingly that causes people to hate us, or as you said, not to we hate other people simply for being where they are, what they've liked. You, 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 you see, um, there is a show called, um, there's a movie, a oh, very old movie with um, um, Beyonce and the Dream Girls, I think. There is so many black people that hate Jamie Foxx from that movie <laughs> for, for the role that he played in, in that. And so it's, hate comes very easily if, if I know it just out of nowhere, it, it's it's there. How, how, um, what can we do to, to not fall into the trap? I say, or as you spoke about, um, uh, what you call it, it, addressing the situation at the same time. Some of us are loose cannons. We can't do that. You do something to me like that. I come back and then I start taking, telling you how your mother really was left sided that way, and then, you know, so we need to come up with with methods personally. As much as there is a recommended method, you need to come up with, with, with steps personally on this is how I am going to handle when someone does this to me, when someone angers me, so that I know my process, so that I never get to the stage where, manja, I wish death on someone. So that's those, those are the things that I had. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mayor, for that one. Amanda, you need to come in on one of the questions or some of the questions that came through. I'll give you an opportunity, maybe after Afan Hedin has spoken. So get ready. Please prepare yourself for that one. I know you say this is a very tough topic for you and really appreciate the fact that you came through for us and you're able to talk about it in such a mature way. Uh, but it's a very heavy topic for you too, not just for you, but for everyone else. Now, I'll read some of the comments, Afan Hedin, you're coming up here. Um, that have been said, may I propose the idea that is it okay if you say to someone, I forgive you, but I don't want to ever see you again and, and, and all that. And, and I asked a question you on the platform. I'm gonna read also something from Facebook. Uti, okay, um, what are the things that really make us angry? One of the people said it's, it's betrayal. Let me read this message that you think has sent. It's about someone who was graduating. Here's the comment from someone after they've seen the graduation pictures or whatever the circumstance was. The person says, you are so poor, you couldn't even afford to get new clothes for your graduation. Ah, you are a struggling man. And Zika says, this message was sent to my friend by an anonymous person soon after his graduation. You're so poor, can't even afford new clothes, struggling man. 
Okay. Now, now for me, I, I read it the way I read it because I imagine that's how that person said it. Um, and these words don't come from people that we don't know. Um, and, and let's not pretend like we're the strongest human beings available. Let's not pretend like things don't touch us. Like, yeah, I mean, things just run over me like water on the back of a fish. That is not true. Let's not even try to pretend like we're the strongest, like things don't affect us because they do. Intimately so. That's what Amanda put across as well. They do. Imagine being told that you're stupid, that you're like your mother, the prostitute. Your mother is a prostitute. You're stupid, you're senseless. And, and I want us to really talk about these real serious things. And also look at it from the flip side and say, we ourselves have said these words to other people. We are guilty ourselves because most of the time we look at things that are done to us but not the things that we do to other people we have instigated there are people that are struggling to forgive me to forgive you because of the words that you said to them much as we are struggling to forgive others we are struggling with hate of others for what they said unto us i want to read something for Nathan. you're coming up after i've read this comment here that comes from Huawei P10. Anger takes away peace. Shouldn't we value it more and empathize with those who are angry? How about allowing them to be and helping them out of it through prayer and making them feel they are normal and justified, yet they need to do all their, yet they need to do all to have their peace restored. Cynthia says, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Okay, I see that. Melissa then says, it's never easy opening, especially for um, empaths dealing narcissistic individuals. It's like opening up is just opening a can of worms because you must be prepared to be gaslighted and have your feelings totally disregarded. And then Gift and Ash say, cutting off is biblical. The Bible says, if you try and resolve one or two, try again, call the third person. If it still doesn't work, then treat them as an unbeliever. Uh, then I'm reading something from Facebook from Mumkap. He says, I'm so sorry to the offended. This is a heavy subject. On the other side is those that cause the pain, hurt, and anger to good people. You listed from business to secular friends, families, and surroundings. To a Christian, there may be forgiveness. And I fear when it's not, it's a non-attached person to any religion. And then Melissa says, some people are safe to love from a distance. I'll read also the information from O Guake Gonke after Van Heden has commented. Let's go. We're talking about real issues here, hatred amongst us. Van Heden, take us through. Yes, but come closer to the mic. You sound a bit far. Okay. Is it better? Loud and clear. Okay. Um, you know, this topic about anger. What, what I've noticed is that I think we, we should be calm. Um, comfortable with people expressing their anger. I think toxicity comes when people get angry at you for being angry. You know, and, and I found that especially with parents to child relationships or where the power dynamics are imbalanced. So if it's somebody who's more powerful than you or older than you, I found especially in our cultures, you know, being angry is an older person is like taboo. Even if they're wrong, like I, I, I remember just a couple of days ago, I, I read this this Twitter thread where this girl says she's been looking for her father. She she didn't know her father um, since she was born, and so she found means and ways to find him, you know. And she was just expressing herself to him, like I've been looking for you. Where have you been? And you know, she was angry. Right? And and the, the first thing that people were saying to her is that no, but you must respect your father. You know, as it's as if you know you can be angry, but there are some people that you cannot be angry with. If they are older than you, you can't be angry with them. If they are more powerful than you, you cannot be angry with that person. And and, and I think and I think that's where so unresolved anger would then lead to hatred. That's why. 
people end up hating others because if you are not allowed to freely express your hurts, your feelings to that person, then you rather boil it, you, you bottle it in, and at the end, it grows into anger. And, and I mean, into, into hatred. And, and I think, you know, since we cannot, we cannot undo the past, you know, in terms of our older generations, etc. But as, as we are, 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 you know, well, most of us are parents and some people are aspiring to be parents. I think let us in our homes allow, if there's anger, even if it's from a child, allow that child to express their anger. It's not only old people who feel angry, even children feel angry. You know, if it's men versus women, women also feel angry and they must express their anger. So I always find find that people are uncomfortable, you know, and just that being labeled, especially like if you're a woman and you express anger, this is an angry black woman, feminine, like they will start labeling because you are expressing yourself. And, and I think that's, that's one of the things that is toxic about our society. Um, that we need to address and say, let if people are angry, let them be angry. Why is their anger making you uncomfortable, right? And I think if we start from there, uh, maybe it will be better. And, and, and she mentioned something, the presenter, Amanda uh, mentioned therapy. Um, I don't know why people are so, people are so negative about therapy. So, so most people think if you go to therapy, there's something wrong with you psychologically. There's something, you're basically you're going crazy or you're losing your mind. Um, I, think, I think we should just, just normalize going to therapy, even if there's nothing wrong with you, even if you're not angry, you know, just, just go talk to someone and to help you better deal with your emotions because we, we go through a lot, guys. This life is not easy. And, and many of us are living in the cities, we are far from our families, we are quite isolated in, the, in our places where we stay. And you just need somebody to process some things with. And, and there's nothing wrong with therapy. You know, just talk to someone so that it doesn't boil into, into other things. That's all I have to say. Well, thank you so much, Van Heden, for, for that one. Um, so we must get to a space where we agree that people should be allowed to be angry um, and, and express um, that, that, that anger um, because I think it's important to really be able to talk about things that make us angry. Um, but guys, this is, this is a really serious thing, hey? Because uh, what, what Amanda said, Amanda, uh, please put on your video on. I, don't know, I hope you're ready to answer that. Because what I'm going to say is like, take a piece of paper. Yo, yeah. I'm going to take a piece of paper. Now a piece of paper, a piece of paper. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I, I got a book. <laughs> I got a book. And, 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 and write the people that, that have angered you or people that you hate. And when you say that I cringed, I'm like, oh, but Mina, I don't think I hate anyone. Mina? <laughs> Man. And then I read the book of Jeremiah that says the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Your heart is deceitful. And it says it's terribly wicked. Yo, imagine it's wicked, but it's terribly wicked. That's a double emphasis. Wicked is already bad enough. It's terribly wicked. I, I, I think outside the handle of God's law, Outside the law of the land, all of us would have killed each other. I'm telling you, I would have made that someone in you know, a personage. Let's go, Amanda, take us through. Um, I think um, most of the questions are kind of the same. Um, what I got was how can you express uh, anger constructively? So for me, so I wrote a book, right? So writing helped me a lot. Um, if I didn't write, I could have been destructive. So you need to, what I would say is, based on my experience, you need to find a way to externalize your anger because, you know, your subconscious will be angry for you. You know, you can end up doing, being into, um, you know, doing 
constructive uh, you know, destructive behaviors you know stopping going to church drinking alcohol you know being addicted yeah so I think it's important that we externalize and for me as I said writing my th thoughts down and also therapy helped me a lot all right Thank you so much, Amanda, for that one. Therapy helped you a lot in writing down your points. Uh, and, and, and as we go along, give them Asher coming up. You know, it would be nice, Amanda, if we had a testimony of someone who was angry at someone just like what you did with your dad and you met him five months ago. How was that for you? Yo. <laughs> I had no emotions, you? guys. I had no emotions. I went blank. Even I didn't know whether to be happy, didn't know whether to be sad, but lucky enough you know i was i made sure that i see that a therapist during his stay um i made sure i see the therapist who like made sure he guides me on yeah but i think i had also a lot of expectations i was very disappointed so i just learned you know what to not have expectation just to take people as they are take people as human beings you know we all trying to figure this life out mm -hmm. so yeah all right. No, thank you so much for that one. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like this because I have never seen my own father. And I'm thinking uh, if I do one day, you know, when you meet someone in the street and you guys look alike, you're like, no, man. When I'm actually, who are you, man, to me? <laughs> but, but the point is, is I think everyone has to confront their source of anger. Gift and Asham are muting you uh, as, as you take us through. Everyone at one point has to confront their source of anger. And when we do, how do we react to that? And again, the way we treat others, Gift and Ash, I can hear you already. The way we treat others, imagine if God treated us the way we treat others. If God could cut us off, imagine if God could cut us off the way we quick and block and put from people. Imagine if God could deal with us the way we deal with others. Where would we be? Gift and Ash, take us through. Okay, uh, Masala, thank you again for the opportunity. Um, I, I, I want, I want to, to go back to, to a question which was raised by one, one person earlier, uh, where they were saying to what, 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 what is, what, how is it possible to forgive somebody, um, and, 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 and then, and then not, not to be closer to them. Um, I think, I, I think that, that, that's, that, that's the right thing to do depending on on what exactly this person did to you or or for, for example let's say you 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 divorce your your spouse you know they, they were toxic they were they were everything that is wrong in a marriage they were undermining you they were they were they were seeing everything wrong in you and then you're like you know what i'm, I'm just gonna let, let's divorce let's just go our separate ways and then you you, you later on you forgive this person um you're forgiven them. Yes, you can be in the same room. You can be in the same. You can be in the same church. You can be in the same heaven, but the, but the forgiveness is not like let's go back to marriage. That's where I am. You should be able to say, "Dude, I've forgiven you. I've nothing against you, but the relationship we, we cannot be friends anymore. But I've forgiven you because you 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 you, 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 have, you, have, you have broken me down. That that as much as I've forgiven you." But the friendship really cannot go back to where it was. That's where I stand, really. I think I think we, you can really forgive somebody, um, but but not to 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 bring them closer to you again. Otherwise, they'll keep on hurting you. They'll keep on banning you, guys. People are evil. Eh? People are manipulative. People are dangerous. You know, you 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 see that this is a toxic relationship. I've got friends that I that I, I still call my friends, but just they don't visit me. Because I know that they're dangerous, so 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 we 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 we're good apart, and we are friends. We can still talk over the phone. We can laugh about soccer. We can do this and that. But I know that no no no, this guy is dangerous. You know, don't bring him closer. But we can still go to the same heaven. There's no problem. But the only challenge is restoring the relationship to where it was. I think I think we we need to get to a point that no, this bridge we we, we can't cross it anymore. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Gift, for that one. So this bridge, we're not going to cross it anymore. You have crossed the line and we're not going back. I don't know, man. I, 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 I hear you and, and I would like to have other people commenting on what you just said. I think Amanda will also comment on, on that one day. Let me read a couple of comments here. Facebook page, you're still there. Um, here's a very painful story. 
Wakegonke, um, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing this. And, and Wakegonke says, mine is kind of complicated. My uncle molested me as a child for years till my teen years. I've not told any of my family members even today. I'm now 35, simply because I do not know how to approach the situation. After finding a way to escape, then I found a way to be okay. Till one day he came to visit where I escaped to, and your, the anger appeared because I'm now older and remembered what he did. It affected me until I started speaking to strangers I won't even recognize today. Talking about it to people we're not related to helped me. I then prayed like for years about it and told God to help me forgive. Eventually, it got better. I can greet my uncle in um, uh, I can greet my uncle in gatherings that we meet coincidentally, but I cannot get myself to have a conversation with them because I just felt disgusted. I have not confronted him even now, and the family still does not know. The story is long. I just want to know if that falls under hatred. Amanda and everybody else, let's try and respond to such a sensitive issue. Thank you, Wakekonke, for being vulnerable. Dr. Enes Njobu says, um, anger is associated with being emotional and not being able to control our emotions. We therefore hide our anger to protect ourselves. And I like this thing. I think Melissa would agree and say, this is gaslighting. When someone says, no, 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 you're just being emotional. Adwena. Just being emotional, you're going to be fine. I think that's a story that men say to women or women say to men like, ah, don't want an emotional man. You just, your emotions are here. Men must be strong and all that. And, and, and you know, when people say to you, um, and, and, and this is something that, that we should also learn as individuals, which when someone says to you, uh, I, I don't mean no respect, disrespect. That's when you know you're going to be disrespected more than ever. It says, I mean, no offense, no offense uh, taken, no offense meant, but this is what I'm saying. Where people justify and say, you know what? I mean, I'm a straight talk. I can tell it like it is. And, and so you have no consideration of how people feel because when you tell yourself that you're a straight talk, that you're not afraid of expressing how you feel, of telling people where to get off and all that and stuff like that. So, 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 so we must guard against this very, very maybe seemingly minute things, but they can cause anger forever. And like what Kamonga is saying here, yeah, this was when she was a child and this was a teenager. And now she's way over teenage, now a full grown adult at 35. And this thing still affects, you know, at 35. And this thing still affects. So what do we do? How do we handle such situations of so much anger? Amanda, you want to come through uh, and probably pick it through? I know I'm putting you on the spotlight, but hey, girl, this is pretty much how things are right now. You know, maybe you can put on your video and, and kindly, kindly respond to, to all of that. Oh, that's a handful. Um, and for, honestly, <laughs> I grew up a Christian just like you guys. Um, I don't have all the answers. You know, expressing anger is just a separate language on, on its own. And I'm still learning that language, um, you know. But yeah, I wanted you to, I actually wanted to say, uh, to just leave you, with, leave you guys with the thought that, you know, we will be forced to sit with, on the same table with our enemies or people we hate in heaven. Mm. Okay. So we'll be forced to sit with our enemies and people that we hate in heaven. And, and this is, I think, this is the scandalous love of God. Um, and I've always, I've always said of late, I've been thinking about how God loves wicked people. They're his favorite. He gives them a long life. Their children are healthy, they are safe, they're financially okay. God is a lover of wicked people. And sometimes we want to hotspot our anger to others and hope that the powers that God has and hotspot God and say, okay, God, we're angry at them, please do bad to them. I think we call it, I think in psychology or whatever, it's called karma, which I believe doesn't even work at all because God is not even moved by the things that sometimes move us in terms of people, the people that were angry at. I think the expectation from a Christian uh, is, is, is forgiveness and it's a very cruel process. And I think love in its foundation is a cruel concept altogether because love says, I'm giving you the ability and the power to abuse me, um, to, to hurt me, to pretty much destroy me 
but I'll still love you regardless. I think love is a cruel concept. Look at the way it ended Jesus right on the cross. And you tell me that's a concept that we're supposed to be following every single time. Right? We live in a world where it's tit for tat. You do to me, I do to you. And we see this even in the people that were at, were with our family members, we revenge, were, were spiteful. I remember someone talking to someone during the week, telling me about a divorce and that the things that she finds very angry, uh, that she's angry about at, at her former husband. Um, one of the things was when she was just left alone to take care of the kids, when she had a huge operation, she needed to cook, blah, 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 and stuff like that. So it was a very, very difficult thing for her to, 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 to go through. But she's angry. And this is not just her, but this is everybody else. So what do we deal with? I want to read something from Unnebo here. But I didn't see your hand. Let's discuss on the issues of anger. It says, I hope telling the other chick being silent doesn't become a cause for hate. Uh, so, so I like that, that point you know, where you say, I hope turning the other cheek, which means like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it and not say anything about it, doesn't become a cause for hate. Because many times we, we, we like to keep a peaceful environment or think it's a peaceful environment, but it's just us buckling anger, being masters of buckling hatred. But he hasn't. I hate, I hate, I hate. And it's people that are close to us and we smile at those people every day. We pretend upon them, but internally, Generally, we know that this one I do not like. This one I do not trust. And, and, and also, are we comfortable with the idea of having friends that we don't even trust? Gift. Comfortable talking to people that we don't even trust, that, that we, we question their motives around us. How comfortable are we? And Ungabo says, as a youth, I am very angry about a lot. Say it, brother. But I feel like I haven't nurtured the capacity to express it in a Christian space. Perhaps I struggle to connect in a space where I can't be genuine. It has therefore been easier to murder the brethren in my heart by hating them in silence. Yo, such genuine things. By hating them in silence, I feel like I don't have the tools to be angry constructively. I'm still learning so that the toxicity hatred in my heart can subside, right? And I think that's something that's uh, pulling through here. And I think one of our people here, Ulilian says, thanks for this topic. It really assists us a lot and says it's the best birthday present and it's a birthday today. Happy birthday, Lillian. And we hope that you are having a great day on this particular topic. Van Hedden, you wanna say something on this aspect of anger and, and hatred amongst us. And you see the interesting part about the title is how to get away with murder. I think there's a whole series on this, how to get away with murder. How are we as Christians getting away with murder when we hate each other like this? hate our family members and all that. And can we also speak about hatred that is borrowed from generations? Like I told you, the Hutus and the Tutsis, right? The Jews and, and the Germans, right? The Ndebeles and the Shonas, the Zulus and the Tosas, right? Yeah. The, the, the Muslims and the Christians. We have entire wars in Africa based on things that we were told about other people that were perpetuating even religious wars, uh, 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 tribal wars, uh, uh, racism, white people and black people that we inherit and we're still going on and on and on and on about this. Van Hedden, go ahead. Um, mine is, a, is an observation. I, I think sometimes as, as Christians, we can be borderline toxic because we we misinterpret scripture so sometimes we even tell people to suppress their anger because it's unchristian we, we tell people to do things that even the bible doesn't demand from them um i, I remember once uh, in a particular church we, we had a, a topic it was about rape you know and rape is a very you know serious and there were some people in the church, who say, you know, reporting rape or putting people behind bars is unchristian. You know, when, when people suffer the consequences of what they what they've done, it, it, it's seen it's seen as, as wrong. And, and and we do this a lot. It's, it's it's like gaslighting, but using the Bible to say no. What would Jesus do? That's the, that's one of the statements that a lot of people use to cover wrong. So if I'm angry at someone at church, people will quickly say, no, 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 see, uh, what would Jesus do? Uh, they want you to quickly bury. They don't want you to, to express 
your anger number one they don't want you to confront number two and people will literally use the bible to blackmail you into silence and we do it a lot if if if, if someone wants to confront another person we jump in the middle and start saying what would hurt you and so we want to bully people using the bible into silence into um being passive and I, and I think a lot of us, I, I'm sorry to say this, but Christianity does not mean that you are a doormat where you can. So I don't believe that turn the other cheek means, I mean, if, if turn the other cheek means uh, you, you allow people to do whatever you want to you, whatever they want to you, then why do we bother even to knock our doors? Um, why do we bother to protect ourselves? If, if turn the cheek literally means you must lie down and allow people to, to scrub their shoes on top, I don't think that's what it means. But a lot of us have got that interpretation of scripture, and I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong even looking at God's character and Christ's character himself. Um, I, I, I don't think that... Um, allowing people to treat you anyhow is being Christian. And, and a lot of us have interpreted to say, being a Christian means you've got no voice. Being a Christian means you must keep quiet under injustice even to yourself and your loved ones. Being a Christian means uh, looking over the wrong and, and, and living in a kumbaya. And I think that's not what being Christian is about. Mm, all right. I, I said you corrected, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, 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 um, Van Helen, for that one. So being a Christian does not mean that you're a fool and that you can be a walkover and all that. And 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 I don't know, Van Helen, I feel like love in its foundation means you are going to be walked over. Literally, we are walking over Jesus and his love, who has been patient with planet Earth for over 6,000 years. But planet Earth is still messing up. I think there is no way in which you can love and not be vulnerable, you can be walked over, and that can cause hatred as well amongst us. I want to read a couple of comments before I give over to Ngebo from Facebook. Madeline Gosa says, anger is usually suppressed by humility. It is pride that nourishes and waters this. Hatred seed, there is never a positive outcome from anger. Yes, there's never a positive outcome from anger. I think that's one of the causes that Amanda put across to say, you know what? Anger can cause you to have physical and, and spiritual pain. You know, Upe, he says forgiveness is one thing that is foreign to our DNA. No one can know, no one can or know how to forgive unless and until Jesus lives in us. I would say forgiveness is not a one day thing, it is a process. In the process, you might not want to see the offender, but with time, when you have healed emotionally and mentally, then eventually you can meet the offender without any uh, reaction. The Holy Spirit would have helped you right through the process. And that's a very beautiful thing. Gift says tribal wars are hectic. Guys, we are millennials. We should love each other and have no hate over tribal issue or racism. We need to love everyone, including albinos, so that those who still have these barriers be careful to miss heaven, right? Uh, then Dr. Ennis says that is true, pretending is not being Christian. So we should not pretend at any particular moment, but be able to understand that we need to forgive and all that. Maybe again, we go back to what Amanda, our speaker says, take a piece of paper, write them down. Who has betrayed you? Who has left you? And I think we've seen how our parents have, our mothers has been beaten by some of us, some of you guys saw how your mothers were beaten by your fathers. Know, how they were cheated on, how they were left on their own to handle a family of three or four of you, how your mom struggled when she should have, shouldn't have, how she left her own dreams, started living the life of keeping on to you guys to make sure that you got have something to eat and all that. And, and your father went to flourish in his life and have fun. Then suddenly he will come back when life has haunted him. And you see, that's a problem that I also have when people come back, not because they, they, they probably want to is because circumstances have caused them. Hunger has caused them to come back, all right? Loss has caused them to come back. That even if they hadn't lost these things, would they even thought of coming back? We speak to friends that we loved so much 
that, that, that betrayed us. So, so how do we do it? A government that makes us angry. Yeah. A government that makes us angry. Our dreams as young people have, have died, have literally died for generations on end. Nothing will ever grow in our hearts and our minds because of the government systems and the corruption and all that. There is so much that is making us angry. No, go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm really struggling to be careful and nice right now. But I, from what I'm getting thus far, maybe, and uh, I might be wrong, is that, um, okay, once again, I'm going back to the definition of hatred being a, a, an expressed anger, all right? And it is possible, actually, to hate someone that you love. That's fine. But uh, 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 maybe you guys can nudge me in the right direction here. But from what I can see, right, also bearing in mind, you know, this culture of silence that we have, perhaps we, we need to um, get to a space where we can start saying that we need to be, uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, be more angry <laughs> um, as Christians. We need to find a way to express, to express our anger because we are holding on to it way too much. Just because you, 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 you love someone, that doesn't now give you the license to, okay, all of a sudden I cannot be angry at that person, as, as my sister said earlier. To, to show that even you love that person, not only are you able to actually have good feelings towards that person, sometimes you can have angry feelings towards that person. And anger, I think, can also be proof <laughs> somehow that there are still some feelings somewhere there, if there are any. But now if we keep quiet and be silent about it um, and make it graduate into something where, ah, you know what, um, you, this, this person, there is no discussion, there is no engagement I can possibly have with this person, uh, then now we are going into something that's a bit more dangerous. And I can see that spirit in our church. It is coming up, you know, it is still growing. If it hasn't, if it isn't already too late, you know, where there are certain things that we don't discuss and talk about. So I think, yeah, maybe in our prayers, we must now give ourselves enough time to speak to God and tell him the things that actually made us angry during the day and get to a point where maybe that alone will be a, a, a means to address it. Because keeping quiet and acting, because hey man, when you hold on to hatred guys, yay, or held on to anger, you struggle to even pray. You know, it starts to affect your prayer life. It starts to affect your relationship with God. So the way I'm seeing it is that as Christians, we need to start becoming a bit more angry. Obviously uh, angry co uh, constructively. We need to be angry about, you know, <laughs> losing loved ones that we did right now in COVID. I am angry about that. I prayed about that. God, can we talk about that? You know, let us come forward and reason to, with, um, together with God and have a genuine discussion with him because we are not being honest with him. If we are going on as if, ah, you know, it's fine. It is what it is. Ah, let us be Christian. I feel as a call for being genuine amongst each other, let us be angry a little bit more, all right? Let us be angry about the fact that we are losing our youth. Let us be angry about the fact that, A, you know, sometimes, yes, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know our, our leaders are not perfect. They are human beings. Let's be angry about that because we care about them, because we expect more from them. Not just keep quiet and be like, ah, what can we say? Because it's a leader or it's an older person, we must just keep quiet. That does not help, all right? Jacob tried it out with his sons, who then in their silence went to the other village to go and kill that guy who, uh, uh, thing, who raped their sister, all right? Silence is not helping because it is going to cause us to murder. I think we need to give ourselves some space uh, to, 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 to be angry um, somehow, somewhere, so that we don't sleep uh, uh, with anger in our hearts. That's, that's my thought. All right, thank you so much, uh, 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 Nebo, for that one. So let's give ourselves time to be angry. And I'm thinking that we're fluctuating on anger and hatred, anger and hatred. I'm thinking that anger is the cat 
and then hatred is Simba the lion, when, but they all belong to the same family. Uh, and this comes from, again, from what he says, when he says, granted, we will be angered, but how do we protect ourselves and even others from developing it into hatred? As what Peggy says, how do we protect ourselves from developing it into, into, into hatred? I think I love the idea of being very honest with yourself and being honest with God. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is Jonah. Ah, that man. Jonah was on fire. Jonah was angry at, at God. Okay, we can be angry at, at each other. Jonah was angry at God. Jonah chapter four, right? God builds up, uh, it's hot. God, God makes the sun to be hotter and builds up a, 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 long, a shade, but I think it was a, a vineyard or something like that. And then, and then takes it away. Yo, you know where the danger is? What Jonah did? He was like, ah, Marain, what's wrong now? Huh? Why, read the story. He was so genuine, so, so genuine with him. Even when he ran to, 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 to Tashish, uh, running away from Nineveh, he's like, when he comes back and God says, no, no, I've taken you back, go there, preach, blah, blah, blah. In Jonah chapter two, I think in Jonah chapter three, Jonah says, ah, come on, this is what I didn't want. Because I know you. You are busy though. One thing, once, 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 once people see you are, you are the master of forgiving sinners. I knew you. That's why I didn't want to go there. That's being genuine. And I feel like we, we need to be brutally honest with each other to a point where, and, I, and I'm reading this from Gift What Gift says, we're, we're millennials and tribal wars and blah, 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 blah. Those tribal wars affected my parents. They affected my grandmothers. They affected your grandfather, your mother, your whatever the case could be. And there is no way we can rubbish and say, nah, it's fine. No, let's fight when we need to and let's be able to talk when we need to. The white person destroyed the black person's life in Africa, literally. For generations on end, has destroyed our life completely. Africa is at a point where Africa can never, ever, ever resurrect from the ashes. Destroyed, literally even up to today. And we're supposed to walk around and smile like everything is okay like we can leave. And I'm expressing this because I want us to be able to get to a point where we're always honest with each other. Our friends who lied to us, our friends who slept with our husbands, our friends who attempted to sleep with our husbands, attempted to sleep with our wives, our girlfriends or whatever the case could be, our girlfriends who slept with our friends, our wives who slept with our friends, because no one, if she was raped, then that's another thing, but if she went there willingly, she did. You're angry, you're not okay. And so this Bible then puts it across here and says, in that anger, in whatever the case could be, you must learn to love and love your enemies. I tell you, we don't even know what we subscribe ourselves into. Christianity is hard. Yo, this thing that we're in, yo. Let me read something from Pell. Pell says, could it be that we do not have the tools to deal with what hurt us? Maybe we need to capacitate ourselves with the skills and knowledge on how to deal with the thing that might be costing us more than we acknowledge. All right, Pearl, if you can, maybe just take us through on some of the stuff that we can do, the skills and the tools and the resources that we need uh, and all that. Angry black woman, there's an entire movie on that one. Well, we, that movie hasn't seen what an angry black man looks like. Yo, what we go through as men, what you go through as women. It's just a whole concussion of so much that we deal with. And as Christians, we are asked and, and, and encouraged to be loving, to be kind, to be forgiving. And all these things like what Upe Utlamani says, they are all very foreign unto us. What tools can we use? We talked about going to psychologists and psychiatrists or going to therapy rather for counseling. And that's good. We talked about... Um, being able to, to, to forgive and, and being able to, to confront and all that. How, how, what are the other tools that we need to, to have as, as we glide towards the end of our, of our lesson? What other tools do we need to have? Melissa says the following, and I wanna read something here. She says, I think we need to allow ourselves to feel but not get stuck in the emotion. We can be angry, but let it not consume us. The point is to find constructive ways to deal with our emotions in a way that's not destructive even to ourselves. All right, perfect. I want to read something also as well. So let's find, um, Melissa says, let's find constructive ways that cannot destroy us. Well, Artie says, the same from Facebook, the same Bible teaches us that you reap what you sow. Isaac Newton's third law 
says for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. There must be consequences for everything. And that has nothing to do with forgiveness. An abuser must go to jail. A cheater must get a shambok. Uh, I don't know if shambok is an English word, um, but let's explain to them. Yeah, they must be beaten, all right? A toxic friend must be disowned. It doesn't mean those people would have not been forgiven, but their natural roles and forces that need to be balanced. That's it. Oh my word. Are we, are we not getting to a point, Ati, and, and, and my brother, and, I, and I, where we... Where, where, we, where we cut everyone off, who are we going to remain with? I was talking to someone yesterday and the guy says, I don't have friends. I'm like, dude, what do you mean? He's like, no, I don't have friends at all. I don't trust people, like blah, blah. He says a whole lot of things, eh? And I'm thinking, we are such, such a lonely generation. We, we the, the, the gift and the beauty of friendship and family and colleagues and church, and different diverse cultures, I think we're losing it because at any moment we, we leave. I've always told my friends and I'm trying to get people to talk as a glide to us. I'm under prepared to give us your last deliverables. Um, I've always told my friends, if you get to a, a community hall, one of the first things as a safety officer is to make sure that you can the exit doors, right? And I think that's how sometimes we approach relationships with each other, with our friends, church members, the moment you get in, you're like, okay, so what are my chances here? If things mess up, I'm gonna go that way, that way, that way. In a, in a typical bus, there's that panel, that uh, images kick out that window, you kick it out, and then uh, you know, emergency. I think, I think, don't we shouldn't we stretch it further and try our best to ensure that when relationships end, they end after we have tried everything every single thing we have tried and redoubled it, redoubled it. Pearl, take us through what you have to say. Um, hi everyone. So um, I don't really have tools. I don't really have tips and tricks because um, I think everyone on this platform can, can attest to the fact that no one's situation is the same. Um, but I will say that we need to allow ourselves to go through it to get to it. And when I say that, I mean to say, um, if someone has hurt you, acknowledge that you've been hurt and give yourself grace, give yourself time to say, um, God, this is how I'm feeling. Allow God to work he that he who has begun a great work in you will, you know. So I think we often look at the 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 moments that hurt us or almost destroy us as just events, but we fail to see that they are part of um, refining our character. They are part of bringing out even better things um, or better versions of ourselves. So for me, the first one that I've learned is to allow myself to sit in it for a moment, acknowledge it for what it is, but then also make time to work through it so that I get to the other side. And oftentimes when you get to the other side, you may not reach the other side with other people, but it's important that in that getting to the other side, pray that God opens your heart and your mind to receive the next group of people that will walk the next lap of the journey with you. And then um, for me, I am i don't know about any, anybody, but COVID has taught me that we are all going through the most like Sia Goa in different versions, in different variations. It's a lot for everyone. And it's important for us to ask God to teach us to be, to be gracious, to be graceful, um, in as much as it's important to address issues, I believe it's important to take time to process it and address it when you are of sound mind. And being sound mind is a God thing as well. So a lot of the tools that we need, we find in God, even knowing which therapist to go to is a God thing because we are then saying to him, God, I'm, I'm ready for therapy. I need therapy, but I need someone who will 
guide walk this journey with me in a way that keeps pointing me to you as well um i hope that these tools i guess or how I've, I've i'm learning how to go through it and also it's just important to speak up to say guys i'm drowning to say guys I, I can't anymore. This is how this thing is feeling and it's affecting me. And for me, it's being able to speak up and say, I'm not okay, or this is how this has affected me, has opened up the people around me to know how to support me. And I believe it's opening them up as well to work through their things as well. I think the biggest thing is that we keep quiet, we bottle it up, and then the next thing we're like, oh, so and so is not talking to you, like Haibo, and then Johnny, what happened? So yeah, that's my contribution. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, Pearl, so much for um, such a timed, um, a timely message that you just put across as to what we can do uh, to help each other in this whole issue. Otherwise, we'll get away with Meda. And in the Bible books, murder is not the killing, murder is the thought. You must hate someone to actually kill them. And so we are satisfied true copies of murderers. When we look at the one that have killed on TV, I like watching this channel called Discovery Channel, uh, Investigation Discovery rather. Uh, I like crime and, investi uh, crime and investigation. I like anything to do with you know, those kind of things. I think on Netflix right now, something is playing about Jeff Dahmer. The, 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 the serial killer and, and I like those kind of things. And when I look into how they kill in my head, I'm like, I'll never do that. But then lo and behold, the Bible says you are exactly like them. You either lack opportunity or you fear going to jail. And so if we hate each other, we're murderers. Omar Jankosa says group I from, paid from Facebook, group identity, group identity crisis is the highest source of hatred. If I identify with any group, race, tribe, Christian, ETC, harboring hatred is inevitable. Individual identity is fundamental for any meaningful engagement because Shonas and Develes, Zulus and Khosas, Hutsis and Tutsis, Jews, and um, the Germans, black and white, uh, Christians and Muslims will forever be there and history will always be recalled by will always be recalled by by don't reason with masses even as christians many crimes are committed under this group identity syndrome all right thank you so much for for that one the group identity syndrome i think one of the things that gift says and i just want to go through uh, what he says it says you know what apartheid um uh, i see you amanda getting ready thank you apartheid uh which is a concept in south africa hatred uh, slavery and all that. And I think the black people have, I don't know, man. I think I'm, I mean, I'm more angry at, at what was done to my race than anything else. And I want to say, God needs to give heaven to black people for free. My kind has met the worst. Heaven must just be for free. I, that's it for free. That's where we need to deserve to go. We've met the worst, being made slaves um taken to plantations even up to now we're still the most despised race in the entire world how do you reconcile that amanda take us through um we need to understand that getting out of a spirit of hatred is a journey um it can take your whole life to heal um that's what actually my book is about um i wrote it from a space of hurt I'm still working with um, I'm still working with God's help somehow. So the title of my book is "Let Go, Let God Live Free." Um, to a certain extent, it it's also about letting go of my anger. I'm still a little bit angry, but I'm still working through uh, my process with God. I hope um, those who've been going through a similar journey like me um, find healing somehow. All right, thank you so much. How do we get it? How do we get how do we get the book in case someone is here and says, listen, I'd like to uh, probably get in touch and get the book so I can read it for myself. Um, you know, let God, let God, right? Did I get say I said right? Um, you're uh, muted. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, my book is on Amazon and Porcupine, or you can DM me privately. Okay. So let me do this. Let me put my number both on the platform here. And so anyone who needs to come through for that will be able to, um, to talk to me. Then I can just give them um, this number. And also I'm going to send the same thing to, to Facebook, the South African number in case you're overseas, but the book is on Amazon. Can you please give us the title again so that, or maybe type the title um, on the chat here, and then I can also send it out to the Facebook family as well. So I've just put my number there on Facebook as well, so that these people can be able in the title of the book. Um, and I think I can see you chatting. Okay. Thank you for heading plus two seven. That's just the South. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm not angry at you at least. All right, that's fine. So, so, um, and then Natale says, please share the link for the book and I'll share it with others in my book club. That's very important. So let's, let's let Amanda go through, uh, let God, let go, let God live free. Yo, and what, and whom the son of man sets free, the Bible says, you are free indeed. There's the link. Uh, let me send the link as well to the Facebook family so that everyone has access to the book. All right. So I think that's so important. Thank you so much for today. Amanda, I know it was a difficult thing and it coincided with what your title of the book says. And I think, um, to be honest, you've done well with the presentation. Um, yeah. And we're grateful as 230 Conversation to have an author coming through and speak to us. Now, I want to give over now to the announcements. But before the announcements, I feel like we need to pray. One of the things that you said is we must pray. Um, there are many people here that are going through a lot. Um, people that are struggling with feelings of hatred, hating their mothers, their fathers, sisters and brothers for what they've said to them about them, church members, colleagues, you name it other races. I struggle with that a lot. Um, not my black people, not my fellow black people, the other ones. Um, so we need to pray. And maybe we need to pray for, for salvation, that God helps us to be able to confront and understand where we're coming from, and then to be able to say we can make it. Um, at this moment, I'd like to ask Amanda, if you can, take us to the Lord, uh, so that he can be able to help us to let go and to let him take control and eventually to live free. Amanda, um, in fact, can we ask our elder to take us to the throne? Okay. Of grace? Elder Nebo will be chosen for us. Elder who? I think elder Nebo. Elder, elder Nebo. Nebo, okay. Yes, yes Elder Nebo. Nebo, yeah, you can always unmute yourself here. Cold, so go ahead. Okay, okay, uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, um, we come to you right now, Lord, um, with heavy hearts um, at this point. Perhaps um, in our discussion, um, some of us have uncovered that there are certain things that we have been hiding from you. There are certain feelings of hurt that we have been holding on to, Heavenly Father because we believed that um, that would have been your, your wish or instruction for us, Heavenly Father. Lord, please unlock your Holy Spirit, Lord, to reveal to us exactly how we are supposed to understand this aspect of our Christian experience. It is something that we are or maybe have been deceived into trying to keep it away from our walk. We have been deceived into sometimes thinking that this has got nothing to do with who you are and what you expect us to be. But Heavenly Father, we are in a space right now, perhaps as a church, where we are unable to progress, even though we have programs. We are unable to grow up even though we are growing old, Heavenly Father, because we haven't gotten to a space where we can be genuine with you and actually tell you, Heavenly Father, that we are hurt by our fellow brothers and sisters. We walk away from this, perhaps not having all of the answers. We are limited in our understanding, if in our understanding 
at this point, Lord, but wherever there may have been gaps and wherever where our, our spirit has been disturbed, Heavenly Father, I, I pray, Lord, that you may come in there and fill in, Heavenly Father, because even you, you, you have created, Lord, in us, Lord, um, a space in our hearts, Lord, that is in a shape that can only be filled by you. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that that space of pain, that space of anger, that space of hatred, that space of ought and dishonesty and silence that we have within us, Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you may be the one to fill it in. There is no tool or skill or some kind of realization or, or anything that can help us get to a, a place where we can fill that void. And Lord, it is very important for us to get to a point, Lord, where we are open to you filling that void for us, Lord, because it is keeping us from you. It is becoming a serious problem in our relationship with you because we feel like we cannot be honest with you and our fellow brothers and sisters. And so I pray, Heavenly Father, that you may teach us, Lord, to, um, to, to think about this aspect of anger and hatred a bit more constructively. How is a Christian supposed to be angry? This is what we need you to reveal to us, Heavenly Father, because there are certain things that still do not make sense to us and we are walking away from them, not making sense even till this point. But Lord, we trust that Lord, as we have come to you with something that doesn't make sense, your strength is, 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 is made perfect in our weakness, uh, at least in this case, our cognitive and emotional and spiritual weakness, Heavenly Father. We pray that you may step in in a powerful way. Um, and we thank you ahead, Lord, for this long journey that you are going to now uh, commence with walking with us, Lord, out of our space of hurt, out of our space of, you know, uh, perhaps even a false sense of pride, <laughs> thinking that, oh, okay, because I didn't express my anger, um, I'm better than someone else, Lord. Out of that space, Lord, um, as we move aside these emotional obstacles in order for us to have a better and stronger um, uh, connection with you, because it is only through that, Heavenly Father, it is only through our connection with you, Lord, you have indicated that we can begin to heal and we can begin to forgive um, those around us, Heavenly Father. It is such a difficult thing for us. We can't even imagine a space of reconciliation within that forgiveness, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that you may somehow provide us with the wisdom, wherewithal, and emotional and you know, intelligence to somehow figure this thing out. I pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for the prayers that have just been offered. We believe in a God who answers our prayers. We thank you for attending today's session. Uh, thank you for being part of the team. Uh, let me just give over maybe one or two announcements. Um, next week, we are going to be having a talk on drugs and alcohol, um, the story of addiction. Um, the, the speaker asked to be anonymous. Uh, so we're not going to show the face. We're not going to ask them to put on their video. Even on the poster, we're not going to have their face, uh, neither their name um, on that one. This is someone who's going through this um, and, and, and asked that, listen, can, can it just be anonymous for now um, and maybe forever? I think that's better. Let, let the person speak. So when we have next week's lesson, it will be just us, the anchor, who has the video on, and our speaker will have the video off, and we'll make sure that the name is written anonymous so that um, we don't have to have any backlash or whatever, but we'll have a free-flowing conversation as we usually do, and we're very grateful for people who are able to express even the things that they go through. Uh, so we're grateful for that one. Then the other week, we're gonna talk about pride and arrogance, the silent killer. That's something that we want to talk about. Pride and arrogance is something that kills us 
and maybe outwardly it's not that clear, but that's something that kills us. On the 22nd of October, 230 Conversation, and I'm glad to announce this, is going live. So we're going to have another live audience. We did this when we went to Golden Harvest Church. We're doing it again. I think this time we're going to Orange Groove. Um, I think my, my, my team members will, will, will help me to, 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 I think it's Orange Groove, yes. I think, actually, I think that's Amanda's church. I think that's actually say, yes, I can see the yay. That's, yeah, so we're going to Orange Groove and it's going to be a live audience. Like, so we're going to have it like this, but then we're going to be with other people and have discussions. You guys can log in, can ask questions the same way we did when we went to Golden Harvest SDHA. So we're going to have another live event. We cannot wait. We'll give you the posters. Please do check our socials right there uh, of 230, 230 Conversations Facebook page. That's the name, 230 Conversations Facebook page. And this one here, this particular presentation is recorded and will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, which is 230 Conversations SDA. Please like and subscribe to it, 230 Conversations SDA. And here's what we're going to start in probably this Friday. We as 230 Conversation, the team members, so I'm thinking every Friday, we have a TikTok session where we discuss issues just amongst us, the 230 Conversation team, which is about five very opinionated, opinionated young people. Uh, all five of us will be talking. You guys can join in on the 230 Conversation. So our, our, our TikTok page is also 230 Conversations. Uh, so please do check it out and also follow us there. So this Friday, we're starting off with the topic. We'll keep you guys updated, but it's going to be quite a hot, maybe for just like 45 minutes to an hour, you know, or less. But just a discussion that we're thinking of trying to have every single Friday as a team, just to spice things up as we are getting things better. Also, maybe the last thing, November, November the 27th, that's on a Sunday, we are going to have our first ever social outing as 230 Conversations. And we're inviting the masses Many, many people are going to be coming for that for that event. So as soon as our posters are done, which is probably this week, we'll send it to you guys for our first ever uh, social gathering. It will be here in Johannesburg. Uh, we'll give you we'll give you details of, of the place where we're going to be, but it will be here in Josie. And it's going to be great fun where we have discussions and play and have fun and, and all those kind of things. So it's something new that we're trying to do, but it's something very exciting as well. So may God bless you as you take note of such very important things. And thank you. Thank you so, so much for coming today. What we'll do now is quickly, I will uh, probably um, close the session, but with a word of prayer. And then I'll send the link to the Facebook page. Uh, we have what is called the After Sins um whereby we talk more about this just for like 10 15 minutes after scenes right uh other people say after tears but it's a part where we talk a lot and a lot about um and all that so then who gift says may you plan a camp as well now that's a good thing all right that's a very good thing all right i'll, I'll sell that to the team that's a great one actually all right so so we're, we're going to plan that then when we start 2023 yo we've got a major event Coming up in the way 2023, I think the first, I think the second month of 2023, a huge men and women conference, huge one that's coming up. So we're going to have it, a real live men and women's conference that we're going to have. We sit down and we talk real issues, the whole Sabbath. That's going to happen through as well. So you will be uh, updated about all these things. And may God bless you again. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you because you love us and may we tap into your love so we can be able to love others even as you have loved us. We struggle with a lot and your main servant has prayed. We pray that Lord, you may answer our prayers. Thank you so much for everything. Bless us as we learn to forgive, we learn to love and let go of hatred and anger, which is destroying us every single day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I'll stop the live feed on Facebook. Thank you, Facebook family. I've sent to you guys the click, the link to our um, uh, to the what to the Zoom rather, and so you guys can come through here, and then you can discuss more on the after scenes. Our, our our speaker Amanda, so grateful. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. You're a wonderful human being, a great, great young woman. And we know you're going to go far and may God bless you in your endeavors. Thank you to Umlebo who was helping you as well with the slides. You did a perfect job on that one. Much appreciated. I'm going to stop the live stream now. There we go. <laughs>